All right, folks, let's take a look at the settings application. In Windows 10, the settings application is actually meant to replace almost all of the functionality of the control panel. So those of you who have been using Windows for many years will know that the control panel really is used to change all sorts of settings. Well, most of those settings can now be accessed and updated directly from the settings application. Depending on how you have your start menu configured, you should have access to settings right in this area. If you don't see it there, you can always go to your action center and access all settings from this menu. And if you can't find it there, you can of course just go ahead and type settings into Cortana. This video will cover the system settings specifically. So the first thing that you can update here is your display settings. So right here, this allows you to change the scaling of your display. So it's difficult to do this in one video here. If I do update this, it'll ask me to log out and back in in order to see what's updated, but essentially everything is going to be larger. So if maybe you have poor eyesight or something like that, that might be a good feature to use. Or if you're using a smaller but very high resolution display, you might wanna go ahead and change the size and increase it. That might make it easier to use that device. If you're using multiple displays, it's sometimes nice to actually have a vertical display alongside a horizontal display. So you can actually change the orientation of your display right here. Since this is an external monitor, I can't rotate the display or change brightness. Um, so these settings here are grayed out. Again, right now the display is being shown on a different monitor. So right now I have it selected to show only on two. However, if I wanted to have the same thing displayed on both of my monitors, I could have it to set to duplicate these displays, or I could extend these displays, which makes it uh, possible to have some applications open on one display and different ones on a different display, or I could have it show only on either of those monitors. From here, you can also access advanced display settings. So this is your display resolution. So this is the resolution of my monitor, so it's detected that automatically. However, I could decrease the resolution. There might be a few reasons why someone might want to do that. And then there's a few more very advanced settings down below there. In the notifications and actions section, there are a lot of great features and settings that you might want to access here. So down in the action center at the bottom, you have quick actions. So these quick actions are actually customizable. You're not stuck with the four that you see on your device right now. So from here, you can change this. Let's say if I change this to note. Now when I click on action center, this is note instead of tablet mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that back, but that's how you would update those. You can also update the icons that appear on the taskbar. So if you don't you maybe need the battery information displaying there and you want to clean this up, you can go ahead and remove that. So you also have notifications, which you can update from here. So perhaps if you receive calendar notifications on your phone, you don't need to receive those on your Windows 10 machine. Also, you can go ahead and turn that off. So after installing applications from the store, you may see more and more things show up here. If you use your device at work and you use it to present, you might want to know that you can hide notifications while presenting. So if you turn this on, you won't receive notifications during your time presenting. The apps and features section is a great area to see what is taking up so much space on your device. So you can see here that a couple of applications right here are taking up a lot of space and then a couple of games. So that's a great way to find out what's taking up so much space on your uh, device. The multitasking area is also a great thing to have access to. So you can automatically arrange windows by dragging them to the sides or corners of the screen. So if you have that on, when you go ahead and snap an application like that, it'll, it'll automatically resize. If I turn that feature off, that will not happen any longer. So if that annoys you for some reason, you can actually turn that off. And then if there are multiple applications open, so let's go ahead and open File Explorer. So you'll see here that I have this option to show what I can snap next to a window. So if I have this feature turned on, when I snap settings, it's going to show me that I can snap File Explorer. So just one click allows me to do that. 
but you can turn that feature off as well if you want to do that. Now if you have a device that has a touch screen, you'll also have this section for tablet mode. So you can toggle that on and off from here. Of course that will also be available in your action center somewhere, but you can toggle that on or off right here. And then you can have it set to always go to desktop or always go into tablet mode when the device is powered on. So if you frequently use your device as a tablet and then power the device on, it might be easier to use if it's already in tablet mode since you can't access the action center or those settings from the lock screen. When you remove a keyboard, you will, depending on what setting you have here, either automatically be switched into tablet mode or you can be prompted uh, with a notification to switch into tablet mode. So if you prefer to just have the device go ahead and do it for you, you can either, uh, you can select one of these options here so that that is done automatically. Now, let me go ahead and show you tablet mode really quick here. You'll notice there are two applications open that are showing in the taskbar. If I switch to tablet mode, those icons are not in the taskbar. However, if I go ahead and switch this option, now I can see the applications that are open. So that would maybe make it easier for you to switch between applications while you're using a touch screen. When your device is disconnected from power, you can enable battery saver mode, which does a number of things to reduce the amount of battery that is used. And then you can have it turn on automatically at a certain area. So at this point, when the battery reaches 20%, battery saver will turn on automatically. Now personally, I never forget to turn my display off when I need it to be off. So I have this setting here set to never. What this means here, is that when the device is on battery power or when the device is plugged in, the screen will automatically turn off. So you can set the number of minutes that it takes for the display to turn off on its own. Now the screen being off does not mean that the device is asleep. The screen can be off and the device can still be processing information. So perhaps you are encoding a video and you don't mind if the screen turns off so that you can save battery life, but you don't necessarily want it to go to sleep right away, you can set a separate amount of time that it takes before the device actually goes to sleep and stops processing information. You can also have it disconnect from Wi-Fi automatically when it goes to sleep if you'd like. New to Windows 10 is Storage Sense. So what this is essentially doing is showing you how much storage is being used on each of the storage devices that you have attached. New to Windows 10 is a brand new Bing Maps application. You can download maps so that you can use them offline. So that means if you're going to be traveling somewhere and you want to make sure you have access to maps, even if you're not going to have cellular coverage or Wi-Fi, you can go ahead and download those maps. This default apps section is one that is very helpful. So if you install a new music player like VLC or iTunes and you want to use that instead, when you click on a music file, you can go ahead and switch the default player right there. That's it for system settings. Thanks so much for watching.